This is what you're here for, a toxic liquid heavy metal known as mercury. And I'm going to be tasting it for science and if you use the money. A lockdown at a local school, not because of a gun or a knife, but a vial of mercury brought to class. This miner is mixing toxic mercury into ore from a small gold mine. Liquid mercury, mercury poisoning, mercury poisoning. Mercury inside their home. We're still now at first, this may seem like a pretty stupid and dangerous idea, but consider the early days of chemistry, formerly known as alchemy. People would just taste test their chemicals to identify what they were before trying to make gold with it. And many of them would later die without realizing that some of the chemicals they've been nibbling on are toxic. So yeah, still a pretty stupid and dangerous idea, but that's not going to stop me from getting a taste of Robocop's seed. And since mercury is the only liquid metal at room temperature, it's not really the sort of thing an alchemist would need to taste test to identify anyway. But I'm not trying to identify it, of course. Instead, I'm going to be tasting it to prove that although mercury is a toxic element, it's just not as bad as many people think. And you can trust me because I bought a couple of beakers on Amazon, which makes me a qualified chemist, I think. Now, don't get me wrong. It's probably for the best that there's a widespread fear around mercury. That way, it's more likely to be handled with proper care. Because if not handled properly, it certainly can be as bad as many people think. Especially with organic mercury compounds, such as dimethylmercury, one of the most potent neurotoxins known to exist. Just a few drops of that stuff can pass straight through latex gloves and your skin. And then your life. Which is what tragically happened to a chemistry professor in 1997, when she accidentally spilt some onto her glove when transferring it between two containers. And about three months later, she died. But her death likely prevented many others from making the same mistake. And I think this is where most of the fear around mercury stems from. All the harmful compounds it can make, like mercuric chloride, mercury fulminate, MDMA, and methylmercury. Now, I would never make any of these things, of course, they're just examples. But what I'm going to be tasting today is mercury in its pure elemental form. And unlike many mercury compounds, this stuff is relatively unreactive and it has a pretty hard time passing through your skin. So long as you don't have any cuts or scrapes on your hand, you could touch this stuff all you want and be just fine. Now that being said, there is one harmful aspect of elemental mercury that I've yet to mention, which is the vapor that it releases. Almost all liquids will passively let off some amount of vapor. And for most metals, being in the solid phase, this isn't really a problem. Except, of course, with mercury. Now, it may not seem like much vapor is being released, and this is because the vapor that mercury metal gives off is completely invisible and odorless. But, if you have a couple hundred dollars laying around, you could easily make it visible. So, here's some footage I found of what it's like to see mercury placed in between a UV light and a fluorescent screen. As the mercury evaporates, the vapor absorbs the UV light, which leaves behind a shadow of the vapor visible on the fluorescent screen. As you can see, even at room temperature, there's a pretty significant amount of vapor here. And inhaling this stuff, especially for long periods of time, can cause some pretty serious neurological damage. But anyway, that's enough procrastination. I think it's finally time for me to give it a taste test. And since the vapors don't really have a smell, I don't expect it to have a taste either. Some metals though, like copper, iron, and zinc, do have a distinct metallic smell or taste associated with them. But whenever you're handling some change or eating nails for breakfast, the taste isn't coming directly from the nails itself, even though the ingredients in my breakfast nails are pure iron. So is big nails just lying to me, or is there something else going on? Well, as it turns out, according to the YouTuber Nile Red, when you touch a metal like iron, the iron acts as a catalyst to help the oils on your skin undergo an oxidation reaction with the oxygen in the air. The product of this reaction is what causes this metallic smell, not the metal itself. The mercury, though, being relatively unreactive, won't act as a catalyst like copper, iron, and zinc do. And that's why I don't really expect to taste anything. In fact, if I do taste something, it's not really a good sign. Unless you, like, really hate me or something. Okay, so enough procrastination. Let's just get right into it here. Right after I go put it in the fridge. Now, while that's cooling down, I must mention that the mercury I've used in previous experiments is most likely contaminated with all kinds of toxic compounds just from being messed with and exposed to the elements so much. So, just to be safe, I ordered another small batch of pure elemental mercury, which should be done cooling down by now. Now, by cooling it down, it won't produce nearly as much vapor that I could accidentally inhale while tasting it. Now, it's still going to release some amounts of vapor, but it's best to limit my exposure to that as much as possible. Now, the only thing I'm really concerned about is like, you know when you take a sip of water and you swallow it wrong and it goes in your lung and you kind of like die for a second? 
well I really don't want that to happen with this because uh, you will definitely you'll die a lot now at first I was gonna use a pipette or a dripper to taste it but I found that that just scatters the mercury everywhere so instead I'm just gonna take a swig from this small beaker here all right well here goes nothing Welp, that didn't last very long at all, and after it slipped out of my mouth into the dish, it dispersed into hundreds of little droplets. Which is another dangerous aspect of mercury, because when dispersed into many droplets, it increases the surface area of the mercury, which in turn increases the amount of vapor released. But I feel like that was not in my mouth for nearly enough time to satisfy a lot of you, so why not go for another round? So yeah, just as expected, it didn't really taste like anything at all. It just felt like a heavy, cold glob of water in my mouth. Plus, I'm not dead, yet. But regardless, mercury poisoning takes a long time to start showing symptoms, and even though mercury doesn't pass through your skin very well, the mucous membranes of your tongue do allow some more mercury to pass through than your skin does. And so I do have an appointment scheduled to test the levels of mercury in my blood, and whenever I get the results, I'll put it in the description or the comments. But even then, most of the mercury that I did end up absorbing most likely came from inhaling the vapor. Now, let me ask you something. Do you like fish? Do you like fish sticks? Yeah? You like putting fish sticks in your mouth, you sick bastard? Well, you might have methylmercury in your brain. You see, the energy that your device is using to watch this video right now may have come from a coal-burning power plant. And they're some of the largest contributors to mercury pollution due to all the contaminants within the coal, including mercury. And when this coal is being burned, it releases that mercury in the form of vapor, and a lot of this ends up at the bottom of the ocean, where it's then processed by certain microbes and converted into methylmercury. And as these microbes are consumed by larger things, this methylmercury is carried up the food chain all the way to the fish that we like to eat. But the beneficial health effects of eating fish still vastly outweigh the negative, as long as you don't eat too much. Don't worry. So to conclude, you should still probably be discouraged by handling this stuff to some degree, even though there's a lot of common household items that would probably be worse off in your mouth than mercury. But even then, mercury is still arguably worse off than most common household items, and that's really largely due to it just being a liquid. You see, this is another toxic heavy metal I have. It's just a small lead skull. But I can be a lot more careless when handling this around, because unlike mercury, it's a solid, and it's not going to release a bunch of toxic vapors or make a huge dangerous mess if I drop it somewhere. But uh, yeah, if you made it this far into the video... The mercury poison might be kicking in.